World Championship winner. The inaugural World Tourist Championship is held in 1960. Welcome along, one and all, to League of Europe Season 11, Division 1. This is the eighth round of the championship, and it is coming to you from Albert Park. The Australian Grand Prix is what is on the agenda. Uh, just coming up in a matter of seconds time. So we're into the qualifying session already. We are going to get action underway out on the circuit very, very shortly. Uh, as has been the case for the majority of this season, it feels like, uh, we've gone through a whirlwind of uh, commentators to uh, go alongside me. Uh, thank and we do indeed have uh, someone else uh, alongside me this week, just drafted in late it is Mr. X Indigo, or I guess we can call you Jamie for tonight, if that is fine with you. How are you doing, sir? Yeah, you can call me whatever you want. Uh, hello, mate. Nice to be here for the first time in LOE, my first time as a commentator. I was supposed to race here, I think, a few months ago, maybe a year ago, but I don't know if things planned on Saturday. But it's nice to be here as a commentator and nice to be alongside you as well. Hopefully we get a good Australian Grand Prix because there's four DMS zones around here. I think it is in the game. Not in the game, there's three DMS zones. I actually can't remember because it's been quite a long time since I've come to South Australia. I should know because I've got a race here tomorrow, so I should know where the DMS zones are. Uh, yeah, the, um, there, there are indeed four. Uh, just uh, out of the last corner into the first corner between turns two and three. Then on this uh, run that we're watching, uh, the McLaren of QVR Gary heading round then uh, down uh, through the middle sector between turns eight and nine. And then just after the start of the third sector, between turns 10 and 11. With four DRS zones, and to be honest, probably at least half the track being made up by those DRS zones, it does mean that the pack tends to stay quite bunched up around this circuit. So that might be what you're going to see, especially uh, in league racing as well. DRS trains, especially at the top level, can be prevalent. But looking at this track uh, as a whole, Jamie... It's probably not the most technical circuit in the world, but it's one that, at least I found, very difficult to hook up an ideal lap in qualifying. Oh yeah, it is indeed. I remember having struggles down at turn one and turn two getting that right, but especially down at turn three where it's quite easy to lock the rear brakes. So they got rid of that chicane. I didn't have too much problems with that chicane, but uh, now it's been taken out. You have that extra DRS zone, which bring more drivers in closer contention with each other. We've got QVR Gary now making his way towards turn one and turn two, if you want to take it away. Absolutely, so he's full throttle out of two, and then the DRS is open for the second out of four times on this lap. Spotting the brake, marker board well after 100 metres, down into second gear, then back up to third, finding that traction. He just gets the full throttle before turn four, flicks it to the left and carries on. He's flat out, heading through turn five, end of the first sector. Split time is going to be 26.7, holding fifth gear, just blipping the throttle through the middle of turn six and seven. And this entire run, the chicane, of course, removed a year or two ago. It is all flat out down towards the end of the middle sector. The battery is suffering here. As you can see, the heck and the high speeds on the circuit, 327 kilometers an hour, 44.2 in the second sector split. So this high speed chicane, and it looked like he actually just ran over the white line, very, very marginal. But Gary, that lap time has been invalidated. So we will look uh, further down the track. Uh, Russell, who was several tenths faster through the second sector, he is also invalid. The championship leader and the dominant force in LOE Division 1 for the moment, but that lap time not to be for the moment. So we'll look for the red bill of Baki, who has just rounded turn 11 through turn 12. Then such high speed, he gets a bit of a wiggle on there. The rear end threatening to step away. Holds third gear through the penultimate corner and enter the final corner, waiting till you get to full power and then opening it up all the way to the line. We'll see what the time is going to be. It is a 1.16.8. Probably not going to be near the top of the time sheets, but certainly it's good to get a clean lap on the board to kick off this session. So that's three or four drivers invalidated. I can see Nuff there on his flying lap also validated too. So a few invalidations as you expect early in this qualifying session, but it's still early qualifying. You've got plenty of runs to go. You've got the track evolution too, and just setting bankers in general to get a general lap time on there. We've got Shadow coming towards now the final corner with the DRS wide overs. Campbell goes quickest with a 16.8, 6 thousandths quicker, and it looks like Shadow's gone quickest with a 16.5. Nice lap time indeed, separated by three tenths. Yeah, uh, that, that's more like it in terms of the opening runs. Uh, in terms of lap times here, as Cucumber goes faster than on a 16.4, this is one of the very few tracks where uh, the lap times are very similar to what they are in the real world. Uh, we saw, I think, a 59 was the real F1 pole position. They'll probably not be too far away from that in this session. We'll see how they all 
get on. But if we, I, am, I am still looking and I am seeing a lot of red on the track maps for a lot of these drivers. It's so, so difficult to hook it up and the track limit's very, very harsh here. So keep it between the white lanes when you're pushing as hard as you possibly can. Proving to be quite a challenge for many of these drivers. I'm just watching QVR Verstappen. He seems to have backed off uh, that lap as he heads to the pet lane. Ultimately, a very sparing opening to the session because, quite simply, Jamie, a lot of these drivers can't get the clean laps on the board. Yeah, they've got about, well, <laughs> only about, um, my maths are correct, 11 drivers where I said lap time, including Freddy, who's back in the pit lane. He's only fueled the car for one run as well, so early qualified. I've seen some people go for different strategies, like to fuel the car up for a few laps on the first set of tyres, and obviously go for it later on in the session, but he's only fueled it up for one, and uh, he validated quite late in a lap as well. So fortunately for Freddy, I'm quite sure if he'd done two runs, and unfortunately just um, validated on the first one, and the second one too, because he was quite low on the ERS, and fueled at the same time. Looks like he ran out of fuel too, so he must have fueled the car for about one lap only, and tried to go for another one, but couldn't quite make it work. So he's back in the pit lane, and we've got more drivers out there on their outlines. We've got both Mercedes of Speed Crown 19 and Rocco Reggie for real in both Mercedes going out there as well. So there are only five lap times on the board then early in qualifying, and we can see a lot of people validated. So hopefully those who validated can rectify the mistakes and try and stay within the white lines. Can be quite difficult. What exit at turn five? Turn down a 10 where we saw, I think it was, early in the session, was, it was, who was it in the early in the session? QVR Gary related there too. With the exit of turn number 11, where I also crashed back in 2022 due to a hydraulics problem. So yeah, it can be very easy to uh, validate around here and also put the put a wheel on the gravel too for good measure. He's carrying a lot of speed, going into a heavy breaker zone. And uh, let's see, I think Rocco Reggie is on a lap time if you want to go on board with him. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, one thing that's so important in this session, because League of Europe this season does have a two mandatory pit stop rule, it means these guys are going to have to look after their tyre sets. It is a track with quite a short lap time where you can do multiple, multiple runs, but you don't want to do too many and you don't have those soft sets to use for the Grand Prix later on. So watching Rocco then heading to the end of the second sector split. His time is a 44.3, not setting any records, it must be said, and he did just brush the wall, it looked like, heading into turn nine, just clipping it on the outside, didn't look to do many damage, just brushing it, then heading into turn 11, and just about managing to get through there, you can see slowly applying that throttle pedal, turns in a bit too early, heading into Ooh. turn 12, the rear end steps out as well, this has been a very scruffy lap for Rocco, of course, never really been a one lap specialist, he is a four, of course, a former race winner in Division 1, but these qualifying laps were never quite as specialty. He crosses the line on a 117.5. Far, far from what he is capable of, I think, because that lap, well, he was all over the place, wasn't he, Jamie? Yeah, the rear end steps out, like, like you said, as well. Oh, sweet oh, car there. Did you see that? <laughs> well, that was so close to almost uh, going in the wall there for sweet car. I think we remember Timo Glock going off there back in 2008 and bouncing over the gravel too. But Sweet Car saved it and he continues to fight another day. It looks like he's still continuing on his lap time. And I think, both, oh, he, oh, lost, oh, he lost it again in Sweet Car. I was off board. So it looks like he saved the car initially. They just lost it completely in the second part. So this has been a very scruffy lap time for Sweet Car, unfortunately. Sweet Car is very quick indeed. I've commentated over him in the past as well. So I know what he's capable of, capable of as well. So hopefully he can find his rhythm and form. I try and get up there. QVR Gary looks like he's invalidated again. I think he's also another set of soft compound tyres he's on. And also, what you mentioned about the two-stop rule as well, mandatory two-stop. I'm in a league where I just joined, and it's a mandatory two-stop as well. So I'm also learning about this two-stop phase. And what I like to do is save about, well, have two sets of mediums by disposal. So I like to have go on the balance strategy as the McLaren's orchestrate a nice little stream down this uh, straight here as QV on Verstappen gets a lovely toe and the other McLaren obviously is the back of the Ferrari. That was very close indeed, but in turn nine, QV on, Gary, QV on Verstappen did not get it hooked up unfortunately, so it compromised him into 10. Yeah, I think he was struggling because of the extra speed that he got from that slipstream. His time through the second sector was phenomenally fast. It was in the 43s, which is what you'd expect to be right up there. He holds sixth gear, heading through 12, a little bit unusually, and then holds third, heading through the penultimate corner, waiting and see just as he gets past the apex, full power, all the way to the line now. The battery runs down, the speed claims, the DRS is open, and he does a 116.6, I think, without that mistake in turn nine, like you mentioned 
could have potentially put that car on professional pole, showing a lot of speed, a lot of potential, but not quite hooking it all up in that last sector. We continue on with Russell, the championship leader, who just comes out of that final corner. This is going to be his first clean lap, and it's going to be a reasonably fast one, but not right to the top. I think backing the Red Bull was following on behind, and he got second. 116.545. It's very tight. Everyone that has put clean laps in, really, sitting around that mid 1 minute 16 range. That seems to be the target point at the moment. Cucumber still on top, just denied of the championship in seasons 9 and 10, and he's looking to try and make a title challenge in the back half of this championship without a race win this season, but so, so close and several times. It looks reasonably quiet out on track. Uh, Slash has just invalidated a lap. I think Fleddy and Mustache are on laps. Fleddy is a 44-2 through the middle sector. Gets a reasonably clean one uh, heading through at uh, turns 9 and 10. Heading into this last sector now. Let's watch it. Uh, hard on the brakes. And a couple of hesitations as he turns it in. And a bit of a correction there on the exit then as the rear again threatens to step away and another moment at turn 12 it seems as though these drivers pushing it to the limit but they aren't quite holding on to the rears for the whole half as Fleddy is all over the place going back to the pit lane and that is another run in the books but with no time to show for it and still we have a selection of six drivers that don't have a lap time on the board finding it very tough then as we mentioned so so difficult to hook it all up here. It is indeed a slash went for another lap time, but uh, he's not very happy about it because he validated, I think, in the last sector, and he's still got an 80.0, which is quite a margin away. He's quite low on ERS and fuel as well, so he has to make his way back in the pit lane to go out for another run around here. But this circuit proved to be very tricky indeed for all the drivers, not surprisingly, especially down in the third sector there, where you're flicking the car away with a lot of speed, but the tyres just can't manage it. Maybe probably a bit too hard at this stage, as I think somebody's moving up the order. I think that Mustache. was. Mustache, yeah, he's got up to P3 with a 16.5. I've got North coming towards the line now. He sets a 16.7. He goes into P7 in the Ferrari, just behind Russell there in P6, the championship leader. But uh, we've got Cucumber on an outlap. He's about to go for another fly lap, I think, around this circuit. Let's take a look at the Alfa Romeo man. He does just cross the line around about now. We've got to keep up with this, of course. Cucumber, he is... 44 points shy of the championship lead, which is quite a ways, and he did miss the apex there, heading through at turn at number one. This could, uh, for all, by all means, be his last run of this session because you, even though we've got five minutes left on the clock, keeping an eye on the tyre allocation is something that is so, so crucial to all of these drivers. He runs a little bit wide over the curve, heading through at turn at four. We'll see what the sector time is going to be. It is not an improvement then. I think that mistake at turn one ultimately costing him in that regard, but he is going to continue flying on down the highest speed section of the track and probably one of the fastest sectors of the entire calendar then because it's pretty much just one continuous straight. So here we go then. He does find a little bit of time, but not quite there. And he goes very aggressively over the curve through 10. Manages to not get bitten back then. The car still complies as he heads into the heart of the third sector of this track. Managing to just... No, he does run over the white line then. Heading through turn 11. And that's another run invalidated. Not quite able to hold that one all together, Cucumber. So he holds that pole position. But that 116.492, you'd have to say, still very vulnerable. Four drivers just over a tenth away. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see if any of them can get through. But they're not going to do that for the moment because right now we have an empty track. Yeah, he's about to say that. I'd to check indeed all 70 drivers in the pit lane as Cucumber had to abandon his lap time due to validation. Just on the limits there, using all the truck he could get away with. But unfortunately, a bit too much for the games like it. So we've got three minutes there and 55 seconds. Two drivers, or well, four drivers, including QVR, Gary, Fleddy. We've seen those two on the track. I haven't seen much of Luke. He's retired, I think he has. And Hazara down in P17. I don't know if he's got a qualifying ban or not, but he hasn't set a lap time more. I made an appearance on the track just yet. So we're still waiting for four drivers to set a lap time. Maybe Sweet Clan as well, and Rocco, Reggie, and Slash due to their unrepresentative lap time. So we still wait to see what they could do and see what potentials they've got. But on board with QVR Gary, then he's about to well, go for a flying lap as he 
brakes and accelerates at the same time, just trying to get the tire temperature. You don't really see a lot of weaving in this game, but obviously you can't brake and accelerate in real life because it would destroy the engine. As the people in Carlton tell you not to do, pressing both, be both pedals at the same time. It's just how the game works, really. You just brake and accelerate at the same time, trying to get the engine, engine temperature or trying to get the tire temperature, brake temperature too, and it also gets rid of excess fuel as well. So that's the benefits of that. Brake and accelerate at the same time. But let's hope QVR Gary get a lot of time on the board here. It looks like he struggled a lot. I've seen him invalidate twice, so hopefully third time lucky, he could get a lot of time on the board. Yeah, uh, on look, by the way, he did uh, make a mistake through turn 10 and stacked it into the barrier, which is, of course, incredibly easy to do. But that is why he is out of the session and will not have a lap time to show for his session. In Gary's case, anything is better than what he has right now. So we'll see what he does. Is it all or nothing, or is he going to leave a little bit of margin? We will see. He opens up the final runs of this qualifying session. Do not look away, because it's about to get hectic. Here we go. The McLaren driver kicks things off. Heading through turn number one then, just about managing to keep it in check. Heading through that opening corner then, the speed climbs rapidly as he heads, revving out seventh gear and then downshifting quickly in a third gear. Now watch, trying to swing it back over to the right for this next left-hander at four. He's a little bit within himself, it feels like. I didn't quite maximize that turn number four, so I think he is leaving a bit of a safety margin. It's still a reasonably fast first sector, though. Point six, just a tiny bit of oversteer, hint of it, as he heads out of the six and seven chicane. Now, DRS is going to be open from now. The speed's going to climb to the highest point that you'll see on this entire track. Eighth gear all the way down here, as he's going to flick it first to the left, then to the right, hopping over that curb over on the inside, just about managing to keep it within track limits and on his way. Now, he does not have a lap time on the board. He's managed to keep it clean to this point. Turn 11 now, just understeering slightly through that apex and not quite using all of the curb. He is, oh, you can see the instability as he turns it in to turn 12 then. The tyres do seem to fall away near the end of this track because these guys struggling to keep it in check. Gary, though, holds it nicely together through the final corner of the lap. He crosses the line. He goes ninth. 116.930 is the time he has. And I've just flicked on the two Alpines. Russell's not improving, but Campbell is flying. He's in the 43s, and he uses a lot of curb through the chicane, but he's going to be right up there as well. So many drivers to look out for, though. Down the stretch in this session. Who is going to set the timing boards alike? We will see, but I am not looking away from Campbell then. The season nine champion in League of Europe gets onto the brakes and to turn number <laughs> turn number 13 as he opens up the throttle yet again onto the curb towards the edge of the lap then. Russell went fifth by the way and Campbell goes fastest. 116.425 manages to get to the top of the time sheets. Can he stay there though? The time is about to expire in this session and so many drivers looking to get lap times on the board. Fleddy's invalidated his in the Ferrari so he will remain where he is then. 15th on the grid for the moment. No time to show for it. Shadow Glow looks like he made a mistake on his first run and he is going again. Baki is up. First sector time or, and the second sector. He's just under a tenth of a second up but he runs a little bit wide. Heading through turn 13 and he, uh, turn 11 sorry, he's invalidated too. So he's not going to be able to improve and I'd dare say it will be the case for most of these drivers. Verstappen, though, was even faster to the first two sectors then. He lifts off the throttle just slightly, heading into turn 12, onto the brakes, third gear, trying to hold on to the car, trying to hold on to the grip. We will see as he opens up the throttle yet again. DRS is open. The speed climbing. Campbell's time. 116.425. Verstappen tops it. 116.410. Is there anyone else that can get in and amongst it then? Chris is near the end of the track. I don't think it's going to oh. be cool. He stacks it in the wall out the final corner. Jim is invalid. Shadow Glow is not improving, nor Russell, obviously. These guys have already done their laps, and I think that's it. Verstappen just snatching pull from his good friend Campbell then. Just a hundredth of a second separating those two. Wow, that was do or die stuff at the end of that session, Jamie. Incredible heart racing stuff there. And what an incredible lap time for Verstappen there in McLaren. And I'm not the first to stop at either on pole position around here in Melbourne <laughs> as well. And also Cucumber had about 20 seconds to spare to start another lap as well. But unfortunately, I think he made a mistake at a turn three. Same with Shadow Glow. He crossed the line just in time. 
I think he had about one or two seconds spare, but didn't complete the flying lap. He backed off immediately, so I'm not quite sure what happened to him either on his uh, second run on the same set of soft compound part tyres. But what a climatic end there to qualify. Three drivers, Fleddy, Luke. I think we saw an Alpha Tari crash. Was that Mustache who crashed at the exit of turn four? I did see an Alpha Tari on the full map who was stationary. It looked like he crashed out there, so I think he, I think it was Mustache because Jube is still going around the track in AI mode. So yeah, what a great end to qualify. Never stop it. Puts it on pole ahead of Campbell, and we'll see what the race brings ahead of us. 29 laps in this race, and hopefully be a thriller with the four DRS zones around here. What could Hazara, Luke, and Fleddy do down there in 15, 16, and 17? Can they make their way forwards? We never saw Hazara appear on the track once, so I'm not quite sure what he was doing. I don't know if he had a qualifying ban or not, or he wants to start in last place, but he's got a lot of work to do from the back. He has indeed, and uh, you know, th those guys you mentioned, unable to quite get clean laps in. Note the gulf in lap times here. I want to point this out, because for Stappen on pole, then Campbell, second row is Cucumber Backy, then you've got Mustache. I think that's one of his best showings of the season. He's fifth, Shadowglow in sixth. Then Russell, work to do for him in the race from seventh, Nuth, Gary, and Chris rounds out the top ten. Six tenths covering those guys, and then a chasm back to Jum at 11th then on a 117.4. Behind that, Rocco, Sweet Crown, Slash, the last cars to set times, Fleddy, Luke, and Hazara. But that big gap in lap times, that's basically the drivers that hooked up something near the best lap they were capable of, and those that didn't. That's that half a second gap between 10th and 11th then. Very unusual. I mean, typically you'd see the whole field covered by less than a second in LOE qualifying, but it just goes back to what they were saying. So, so difficult to set a good lap time in qualifying, but nevertheless, it does set you up for the race if you did nail it. So they all line up. Weather looks absolutely spectacular, and we'll see what the tyre strategies are going to be for this race. Two stops, of course, for every driver, and because, of course, of uh, free reign in terms of the tyre you start the race on, and we've seen quite often throughout this season, could be different tyre choices especially for the front guys. So even those guys at the front row, they may go for different tyre strategies. We shall see. I don't think I expect anybody to be on the hard compound tyres, really. Usually in a one-stop race, you'll see hards to mediums or mediums to hards. But I think what I've done in the past when it comes to a two-stop race, like soft, medium, medium, or medium, medium, soft, I'm not quite sure which would I go for. I think I use the soft compound tyres later in the race, too, to have that extra fresh grippier softs towards the end and go flat out on them but we'll see how the tire strategy pans out maybe depending on how many softs they save because usually i choose the balance strategy i get about three sets of softs in qualifying and i save uh, use two and save one so we'll see his has got a lot of softs to dispose of i think a few others have as well so maybe they could use more than one set of softs around this race trap it's quite interesting to see the variety of strategies that may go on throughout the whole field Yes, and indeed. Uh, you say you don't expect hards, but we have seen that quite often throughout this season, even in these uh, two-stop races. And actually, we do have a few drivers that have selected them for this race. So let's run through it. No changes for the front two. They're both on mediums. In fact, that does seem to be the prevailing strategy call. But we have three drivers each, if my eyes are working, <laughs> going for each the uh, soft and the hard compound tyres. So splitting strategies, and that's what's one thing that has puzzled me slightly throughout this season. We do still see drivers in these two-stop races opting for those white-walled hard tyres. So these first few laps are going to be very crucial for, no for Mustache, Nuth and Sweet Crown to try and hold on. Sweet Crown does often go for that hard strategy, I'm sure. But it's very interesting, isn't it? Because... I agree with you. It seems counterintuitive, but we'll see if any of these guys can make it work tonight. Yeah, so those guys, the soft compound tyres, they reach about three. A majority in the medium compound tyres too. So Cucumber has to get a really good start off the line. Same with Shadow Glow as well, because he's got a half of, of moustache in front of him. So he has to clear him immediately and not get stuck behind him once that DRS opens after lap two. Usually, well, I think on the next game, they might have the DRS open at the end of lap one, because it is in real life as well, the DRS... I don't think it's made no difference really, has it? DRS opening after lap one in real life racing. Bearing in mind, they've only had two races so far, Jeddah and Bahrain. Yeah, we will see. Uh, of course, uh, I just uh, tuning into last night, if anyone was watching, last night's F3 race around this track was absolutely stunning. So I hope we see more of the same from these was guys. Was crash? Uh, in last night's F3 race? <laughs> oh. Are you, talking about, are you talking about real left three or yes. the division three? Oh, real left three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I saw a crash. I think uh, Martini, if that's his name. I can't remember his name, but he had a crash at the pit wall uh, exit. 
got taken out by somebody. If you saw that, I don't think I don't think it was an F three. I think it was an F two. I can't remember. I can't. I just saw. I know. I know. I saw a crash there. But I don't know who it was. Uh, it wasn't at the best time. I'll, I'll be honest. So I don't blame you. Anyway, we will now get to racing. Just in a couple of seconds, time it's either Stappen, Campbell, front row, the McLaren and the Alpine. Which one of them will lead heading in to turn one? Watch out for Cucumber, starting from those softs as well. He will be rapid coming off the line. So here we go then. We are looking for the eighth round of the championship, the Australian Grand Prix. And they leave the grid in Albert Park. Oh, from the front, it is Verstappen and it is Campbell. And eventually we'll get a camera angle, which will show what is going on. Verstappen converts the pole position. Outside, Cucumber trying to snatch away that second place. Gets forced to the edge of the track by Campbell, who just about manages to hold on to that P2. Then Backy is lining up an inside line, looking at the Alfa Romeo. Tucks in for now as they run two by two in the midfield, heading through turn number three. We'll see if any of these hard runners are able to hold on. Mustache has lost a couple of places. Shadow Glow and Russell moving up. Further back then, June battling away with Chris, who has Rocco all the way around the outside and off the track, heading through turn number five. They all filter through without any major issues then. Taking away nicely, but you can see the slipstream fest begins as Shadow Glow takes Backy, and Backy also has Russell, who looks to side between cars, and outside of Shadow Glow, heading in to turn nine, and he's got it. Russell, what a start from him, and cutting his way through. Big mistake, though, heading out of ten, and Shadow Shadowglow fights it back. Number one and two in the championship. Run side by side at a turn 11. But Russell comes out on top with late breaking. Phenomenal start. Looked at very low wings as he ran down the straight. Gary and Nuth swapping places. Then the Ferrari going backwards has Jim all over the outside lane. But they duel away. Verstappen converts the pole for, uh, from Campbell and from Cucumber. But my oh my, that was impressive from Russell. who He's made a superb start and is now right there with the leaders chasing them down. Oh, what a great opening lap. That was very chaotic indeed, but no crashes, no spins, it seems like, so all got away unscathed. Thankfully, all 70 drivers in this race has always been up two places as well. Like I said, Mustache has fallen down at P7. He got compromised into turn one because it went three abreast, so somebody had to back out, otherwise it'd be a crash, and unfortunately, Mustache had to back out being there in P7. But I forgot how powerful that slipstream is in the middle centre. Without DRS, Russell had a lot of overspeed on Shadow Glow, used a bit of battery as well for good measure to get past him. Made it work though, he's up into P4, Shadow in P5 on the soft compound tyres, finds himself a medium runner ahead of him, so not really ideal for him, because he could come on those soft compound tyres, right behind Campbell, Doom has got past North for P9, but not able to make a move into turn 9, there you go. Now filtering through into the third sector for the second time on this Grand Prix. Sweet Crown and Fleddy are battling away. Uh, Fleddy, who got podiums in the first two rounds, getting squeezed out through 10. And Hazara makes up another spot into 14th now, chasing Sweet Crown, making good progress, coming off the line. Still Verstappen leads Campbell Cucumber. Cucumber sitting third in typically patient style from him. He waits, 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 doesn't burn the battery. But you sense he may want to get the most out of these soft tyres while well, they're still at their best. Campbell just managing to stay within DRS range of the race leader as they head onto the crucial third lap. That is what he was going for, really. He makes a small mistake heading through turn one. And Cucumber may fancy his chances, but as always, he just decides to wait, observe, and try and make his moves and his offensives later on. The real potential break in the train here is 7th to 8th. Gary looks like, and this is often the case with Gary, he struggles in the early stages of the race to get settled in. He's used a lot more battery than Mustache ahead of him, who's doing a very nice job holding on on those hards, which seem to already be looking very good in terms of grip. But Gary seems to be the one that's struggling, and he's having to work quite hard, burning a lot more battery, to stay with this train that is being led by the race leader Verstappen. So Didi was outside of DRS range on lap 2 but got himself back in it but he finds himself an Alpha Tari all over the back of him you can see the DRS is literally very powerful and Cucumber tapping the back of Campbell as Campbell had a bit of a moment at turn 10 but he's not able to make a move into turn 11 he's not close enough as Cucumber so he'll be frustrated there with the, with Campbell having the DRS a QVR of a Stafford it's helping him stay in P2 but Cucumber there with a lot of battery and spare will he use it down that middle straight to try and get past Campbell and put himself up into P2 as we round off lap 3 Going up to lap 4 with QVR Verstappen still 
in first place with Campbell under massive pressure from Cucumber on those soft core part ties. You can see there, Campbell having a lot more, he having to use a lot more ERS to try and stay ahead. And he's got about 40% less battery than Cucumber down in P3. He's all over the back of once again in the second DRS zone at a turn two. Is he close enough? He goes wheel to wheel in turn three. Let's see if Campbell defends the inside line. Who's late to the brakes here? They go wheel to wheel. Cucumber on the outside. What a lovely move. And he goes up into P2 with a spectacular move around the outside of the inside line into four. The sheer difference in grip there was extraordinary, and Campbell had no answer. He slips back to third place. I don't think you'll mind that too much at this early stage. Cucumber managed to get past without losing touch with Verstappen. That's very important for him. He's going to open up DRS once again uh, down this straight. He has actually just been broken. Verstappen has just dumped a lot of battery heading down that straight and managed to open up a bit of a gap. Now, that could be a very intelligent move. We'll see. Cucumber's going to have to work his way back in. He does just about have it. And the uh, detection point is all the way back, uh, heading out of turn six, which is ultimately what saved Cucumber then. But Verstappen tried, and may still be trying, to break away early in this race. Russell is all over his teammate Campbell then, looking very, very hungry to make that move after a disappointing qualifying session. But Verstappen here, using that battery, trying to burn it up, and Cucumber... Not panicking, but he is right on the edge there because Verstappen is absolutely motoring 120.3 fastest lap, using a lot of battery and putting everyone behind him under a lot of pressure. Two point there for those two DRS and either before turn number six or somewhere near it. So there is one detection point, and that's why Cucumber had the DRS open down towards turn 10, towards turn 11, because he was outside the DRS range, but actually he's outside the DRS range again. So it looks like Verstappen there might have saved himself. He's used a lot of battery there, and that was very crucial because he dumped a lot of battery. And if he wasn't able to break out that one second range of DRS, it would be vulnerable having no ERS to defend from these guys. Russell is all over the back of his teammate. I think that's an easy move there. It goes into P3. Campbell not putting up too much of a fight. And it releases Russell to chase after Cucumber, who's trying to get back in the DRS range. But he might be under pressure from Russell behind. Russell's car is phenomenally fast down the straights. There's nothing anyone can do to resist him at the moment then. He flies, glides past Cucumber, and just about into the RS range of our race leader. He may have picked up a warning, though, on the outside of Turn 11. It was very close. So he's made a phenomenal charge in his opening laps, and is now it was very nip and tuck then as to whether he got the DRS. Has he managed to do it? I don't think he has. He is going to have to wait. He's going to have to burn a bit more battery. Cucumber is still in behind. He's still being very patient. 120.5. One. That is incredible Ooh. pace already as Hazara picks up a penalty very early. He's dicing with Rocco down in the main straight. Ends up behind the Mercedes for the time being. Still looking for a way through as Cucumber draws back alongside and past Russell into turn three. Russell mounts the curb on the inside of three. Loses out on that possession, but it looks still Cucumber. He hasn't used any battery. He's remaining very patient still, but... If I were him, I would be working hard to get back in that DRS range because without it, whoever's at the front of this train is just getting swapped on there because there's nothing you can do to hold back the driver behind. So the gap just over a second then. Russell, you sense, may have plenty of pace to try and chase down. But these guys, if they're going to overtake each other over and over and over, they're going to have to do it efficiently to make sure they're not losing more time to our race leader. Yeah, exactly. So you've got to leapfrog each other, not in the breaker zones, but on the straight before you get into the breaker zones. Here comes Russell flying past uh, Cucumber. Now Russell versus Verstappen. Is Russell in the DRS range of Verstappen? Yes, he is with the extra speed he had down the straight. He's got a bit more ERS than Verstappen in P1 there, but oh. Cucumber with his ear. I saw that as well at the exit of 13. They're just losing the back end of the car. But for my for, for information there, for Hazara, he picked up a penalty at the last corner. He was going wheel to wheel with Rocco Reggie for real. Rocco lost it out of turn 12 and 13. You know, his teammate went through and Hazara tried to go through, but Rocky kept his position. And later on in the lap, Hazara overtook him as well. That's why they're a bit far behind from Sweet Car outside the DRS because they had a bit of scrap go wheel to wheel in that final corner there. But the gap now is six tenths then. So Verstappen will be in trouble then because he's not able to get away in P1 then. North has overtaken Junior, that's a good move up the inside. He puts his Ferrari in P9 on those hardcore pad tires. Are the hard starts come back into play? Mustache is still there in P1. Oh, Mustache made a mistake, was it him? Yeah, he had a big snap heading out of turn five. An unusual spot to make a mistake and kind of making both of us eat our words because I was about to say the hards are really starting to come into play now. Uh, just as Mustache on the hards had that little bit of a moment. So the front of the race now coming back together. Campbell is all over the back of Cucumber as well. And Shadow Glow on, in the Williams is the one that's on the edge. He manages to just about wrestle it back in. But Verstappen leads 
uh, Russell staying patient though, as Nuth makes another move. This time on Gary, heading down towards turn 11 as Rocco's gone off. That's out of the chicane and safety car, full safety car deployed then on the seventh lap of this Australian Grand Prix. And Rocco didn't see where that was. Uh, didn't, well, I did see where it was, not how it happened. But just going off out of turn 10, a very easy place to bend it and all of our race leaders diving to the pit lane. In fact, to get this first mandatory stop out of the way, it might be the entire field darting in to pit road. And while that does somewhat equalize things, you would think, drivers like Campbell in that Alpine are going to lose out here with that double stack. Oh yes, they are indeed. So I was about to ask as well, are they allowed to pit on the safety car? Because in the other league I have with the mandatory two stop, you're not allowed to pit or virtual either, but it looks like you are allowed to put it in this one as well, so that clears things up, and looks like Russell on the hard compound tyres then, Verstappen's got us the medium compound tyres, so that's the first stop over and done with, without losing any time other than a double stack there from both our peers, Campbell has fallen down into 8th place, he's put on a set of the hard compound tyres there, so it looks like both our peers there, going for the same strategy, we've got a few softeners in the midfield there with, with Zara, Chris, and Slash out of P15 there, so a lucky to Rocco there, Looks like he had a difficult race and had a difficult qualifying too. And it's all ended there at the exit of turn 10. An easy place to bid it as well. We've seen plenty of people crash at the exit of that corner as well. We saw Felipe Massa do it, I think, back in 2013 when uh, I, think he, I think it was wet conditions on that day too. And Timo Glock was another driver who did it as well. Not the first and not the last driver to do it. There'll be plenty of others that will suffer through there. Yeah, many drivers have uh, had an off there, including myself. I, uh, <laughs> I also had a race-ending crash heading out of that corner once upon a time uh, in this very league, actually, uh, several years ago. So it can happen to anyone, and unfortunately it has happened to Rocco tonight, who, other than a podium in Zambort with a phenomenal late-race charge to take home that podium, it has been a very difficult season for the Mercedes man. And to be honest, quite a difficult season for the Mercedes team itself, but we did see Sweet Crown picking up that second place on the line uh, in the last race uh, in Baku. So the field is all together. We will have one more lap under safety car. We should get back to racing at the end of the ninth lap. And the difference in tyre strategy amongst these race leaders also proving to be rather intriguing. Russell in second, we saw him move through the field with a great start earlier. And really, the responsibility is on him. It feels like he's led most safety car restarts this season. This time he runs second behind Verstappen, who's essentially led this race from start to up until now as Gary pets in. And this is the uh, one of the peculiarities uh, with our two-stop mandatory rule, as you said, with pit stops allowed under safety car. Gary and Slash are both gambling here. It's going to be hard for Gary. I imagine Slash is going to do the same. Both pit stops done, out the way. And these guys there are focusing on, presumably, taking those hards the entire race distance. So Gary and Slash going for that. It's probably going to be quite marginal, but they're going to get both stops out the way, no real track possession to lose, no real risk attached to it, so they're going to go for it. They've already got the stops. Can they take those tyres all the way? I think you can on those hard compound tyres. I've seen people on mediums take those mediums about over 20 laps, so I think the hards are doable as well. But, yeah, that's a good point you make as well. I never thought about that. People pitted twice under a safety car to get rid of the two pit stop rule there. So that's very smart from those two. I never thought about it indeed. But, yeah, that begs the question if should... I don't know actually because it could be a controversial one because like let's say if someone's on, like coming towards the end of their tyre life and the safety car came out you're not allowed to pit then that's controversial because they're on very old tyres and lose out like, dramatically then then begs the question is do it two stops under a safety car allow but the safety car is coming in at the end of this lap then so we'll see if Gary and Slash can take those tyres towards the end where everybody all 40 drivers still have to pit to make their second stop Yes, indeed, and of course they will get essentially a free ride, but and I imagine not lose a whole lot of time, all things going right, to the race leaders. We will see. Verstappen guiding them along, Russell waiting, waiting. We'll see how Verstappen is going to play this. This last sector does give you a few options, opposed to the um, usual running it all the way up to the line. He's dragging the brake pedal, as you can see then, trying to burn up a bit of fuel, get the tyres in the right operating window. He's keeping the speed relatively high here, it must be said. Up over 100 kilometres an hour, usually you see drivers running it a bit slower under the safety car. He still hasn't accelerated just yet. Will he go out of 13? He will go out of 13, and Verstappen opens it up, getting those cool tyres fired up and getting a good gap. Immediately, Russell's going to have a harder time getting those hards 
and to the right operating window, he runs six tenths back. Everyone looks to be relatively clean off the start. No side by side dicing down the straight. Cress and Hazara on the fresh softs are going to be the drivers looking to make progress as Nuth picks up a time penalty immediately heading through turn at number one. So that's going to set him back no end. Looks as though there's no potential for moves heading down this first straight down towards turn number three. Everyone just running in formation at the moment. Verstappen leads. Russell burning a bit more battery, trying to stay in contention. He's doing so just now. He will have a lap or two before that DRS comes into play. Mustache is the one that's making the biggest impression, though. He draws up and alongside Baki on the run towards turn number nine, and it's a simple, straightforward move. Cress as well is attacking Campbell. He's got himself to the inside of nine. He will get himself up and alongside the front wing of the Alpine, then goes just in front before the breaking zone and sends it through. Cress now runs eighth. And this Australian Grand Prix and Sweet Crown may look to follow through behind the Aston Martin. Can't quite do it. So he now still runs in at 10th place. But Chris making that move, it was a very spectacular one. But one thing he now has to worry about is getting across to the group in front. He's got to use those soft tyres because in doing so, getting that move done, a gap dead open up to Nuth in front. So he's got a big lap ahead of him to try and claw that back. Yeah, the mediums on Harvard is ahead of him, so he should, in theory, be able to get back in DRS, or considering using a lot of battery as well. And here comes the Ferrari not up the inside into one. You know, oh, he goes off the track slightly there, and he almost lost the car too. And he's definitely lost a lot of time to Mustache now, making that move into one. You don't really see a lot of moves into one. It's usually down at turn number three where we see some moves. But here we are with Campbell versus Sweet Car going wheel to wheel. Sweet Car on those media compound tyres has the grip, has the purchase, has the inside line, and he takes P9 away from Campbell. So Schaefer Campbell looks like he's lost some pace as well. He's running up there in P4 and P5, but has dropped ever since that second, that first pit stop due to that double stack, and now he's in the clutches of the Haas. Looks like Campbell might be struggling in those hard compound tyres, it seems. And now you can see Hazara all over the back of him on oh. those soft compound tyres, going wheel to wheel, and we'll see then if Hazara can get past. No, he tucks him back in the slipstream of the Alpine. Now the Alpine may be using a bit of ERS to try to stay ahead, which he does, and uh, Campbell just stays ahead for the time being there. But uh, we, had so we saw some great moves up to turn one and turn three, and Chris has got himself back in DRS rage, but now is the question, can North get himself back in DRS rage after making that move into one and also lose the back of the car too? Hazara just giving Campbell a little bit of a nudge through turn 11. My little uh, reaction uh, in that DRS zone was because I did not expect him to pick that side of the track uh, for that move. Uh, attempted move heading into turn 9. He still runs behind Campbell. Cucumber is up behind Russell. And Russell, you'd have to say, given the slide that his teammate has suffered, he's done a very, very good job. He's had to use a lot of battery. But at the moment, he's hanging on in there. He's got Cucumber right on him. But he's kept Verstappen very much in touch. Not an easy thing to do. We've seen the race pace that Verstappen has had being able to break the DRS earlier in the race. He still leads, but Russell, he'll have the slipstream all the way down towards turns 9 and 11, and, you've, and he is doing an excellent job then. The hards will come into their own later in the stint. Of course, uh, Verstappen is on his second set of mediums. He will have to use a different tyre, probably the softs, I imagine, towards the end of the race. But Russell doing an excellent job, and Cucumber sitting in behind, being patient and not making that move. Russell closes right up to the back of the race leader, and now the hearts are probably not still in their operating window, but Russell, you'd have to say, doing a mega job. DRS is now open. Is he going to go for the race lead? He is going to wait in then. These top three begin to stack up on each other. Shadow Glow watching and waiting in behind as Crest moves past Baki, heading in to turn 11, makes another, to turn 9, sorry, makes another move. I was right the first time, turn 11. <laughs> Through goes Crest. But yeah, Russell, the only hard runner really that's been able to stay in contention and stay, you'd say, right in the hunt at the front then, keeping Verstappen very much in check. Yeah, those four DRS zones are definitely helping. Try and keep a contention as well. But he's got some mega pace. We saw it in the first in when he made those two moves before turn nine and turn ten. But yeah, that that corner down to turn eleven did confuse me for a bit when I said turn thirteen because of that chicane there. So it has caught me out in the past before, but uh, I managed to get used to it as well. Turn nine and turn ten instead of turn eleven and turn twelve as it probably was. Do you miss that chicane? Do you think it should uh, been been removed or not? Um, well, I think in uh, in the game, I actually quite like that chicane in, in a weird way. The, it was a difficult traction zone coming out of it, but it was quite a, a satisfying corner, I feel like. Uh, now, I feel like it makes league racing a bit too easy <laughs> in, this, in the sense, because everyone just 
follows like this. You can see a couple of breaks in the train, but not too much. Sweet Crown gets past Baki. Hazara moves past Campbell, finally. And Sweet Crown's going for one more. Gets inside of turn nine and gets the place on Crest. They swap places and, of course, double DRS. So Crest ultimately suffering from that and losing out. And Baki is swerving towards the inside of turn 11 and uh, waits in behind and the Red Bull. But all this scrapping, and we mentioned efficient overtaking. This is not, this is fighting, and it's losing them time compared to the leading sextet, if you will. So these six now scampering off, they run very, very close to each other, but with the pace that Verstappen is still setting at the front, gonna need a lot from this group behind who seemingly are more interested in racing each other than trying to get back to the drivers in front. It's going to be very hard for Sweet Crown to try and get in the DRS range as Hazara once again picks up another penalty, unfortunately. So not having the greatest races or considering he started 17th up into 10th, but those penalties will knock him outside the points considering how close those guys are in the second DRS train. But Sweet Crown might have a bit of a hard time trying to get to the top six of having a bit of a DRS train themselves. Cucumber all over the back of Russell. And look at the ERS manager. It's been so sufficient. Is this where he's going to make his move now on Russell? Is Russell going to have to use a bit more batteries to try and keep Cucumber behind? Will Russell be forced to overtake the Stafford to try and keep Cucumber at bay? Here we are, Russell around the outside. Here comes Cucumber trying to go around the outside. But why is he backs out of it? Because he's not close enough to do that and make contact or try and, uh, yeah, try and stay in P3. But you can see now with the DOS again, here we are going down into turn 11. Cucumber to the inside. Has he got uh, Verstappen? Verstappen still around the outside. A bit of contact made for good measure. Russell's able to... Pull away now, thanks to these two going wheel to wheel! Oh! And Cucumber spun! He's in the wall, he's lost his wig! I said massive shame, but there's a Ferrari also in the wall. Who was that? That was Nuth, who was also in the wall too. So what a, what a drama going on there in this race. And Russell was just past the pit lane when the safety car got brought out. He stays <gasps> out, everyone else comes in. Nuth and Baki stay out as well. You gasp there, I'm not sure uh, what has brought that one in, but... In any case, everyone else getting fresh tyres on. Verstappen has to go hards, of course, because he's used double mediums. Mustache, Shadow Glow, all these guys are on tyres that can surely go to the end of the race. Uh, but, uh, Gary has been left out there after gambling on those hards, so he remains out. He does still have track position, but Russell, he's already having to wait behind that safety car. And just missing out on that opportunity, he's surely going to lose a heap of track possession here. So the top three, then have a big disadvantage coming together. Cucumber added to 15th place, and Russell, who looks like he benefited from those two scrapping away, was able to almost able to break that DRS range, but the safety car came at the wrong time, and he's caught the safety car, whereas the others, from P5 downwards, on the hard slash medium slash soft, thanks to slash on 16th place on the soft compound tyre, is able to take those tyres towards the end. They've done their mandatory two-stop. Russell, if, you, if, if, if it was a one-stop race, he could take those tyres towards the end, but it's a mandatory two-stop. He's got to pit again, and he'll fall down the field, unfortunately. And those guys will have a problem making it towards the end on those medium-slash-hards. So, what a race there. And unfortunately, Russell has disadvantaged. Advantage very quickly, but the pendulum has swung towards the guys who've pitted thanks to that safety car. Yes, indeed, and he cannot get any benefit then. Already waiting behind as the front of that group is already here. Verstappen does reattach himself on the back of his teammate. Watch how Gary's going to play things then. Maybe that's why he stayed out instead of doing yet another pit stop then. He does still have track position, I suppose, and he may be able to hold on here. Russell does still stay out. Nuth it was that came in, so Russell's going to gamble on this anyway. Maybe he's hoping that there'll be another safety car, but it seems as though... There's no way of rescuing this at the moment unless he gets very, very fortunate. We saw a similar dynamic in the last race, at last time out in Baku. And ultimately, the pendulum swung multiple times on that day. But here it looks like it's going to be very difficult for these top three still running up at the front of the race. Verstappen Mustache now runs P2. On that incident, by the way, between Verstappen and Cucumber, I do think that Verstappen left enough space and Cucumber, of course, in that... Very tight corner, it's it's very fast, but deceptively narrow. And I think maybe his car just understeered out and made that little bit of contact. I don't think Verstappen really did anything wrong then. He comes out unscathed though, and he's in a very good possession here. We will get back to racing on this lap, but with these three at the front on old hards, you sense it's really just how long they can delay the inevitable. But Gary in P3, Jamie, is the car I'm most excited to see how he handles this restart with his teammate immediately behind him. Yeah, you would think that Gary would let Verstappen through immediately, 
and uh, Verstappen then will be on charge to catch after Baku and Rus Baku, sorry, and Russell in P1. And Russell had blistering pace in the first and second stint. Now it's going to be a massive pressure and has to make a pit stop too. And when he does make a pit stop, he won't have the time to try and catch these guys back up. Maybe some of, some of them, but not where he's supposed to be, unfortunately for Russell. That's how racing works sometimes. Not as out of your control. And you've got to make do what you've got, unfortunately. But he will slow the pack down because, because he becomes the virtual safety car after allowing the actual safety car to come in. And he'll decide when the pad to go there. So watch out for QVR Gary, like you said. And Verstappen will be on a massive charge. Will Gary hold up the rest of the pack from P5 downwards? Can he hold up the pack on those older hardcore pad tyres? We'll see. What could um, Cucumber do down in P14? He had, had blistered with pace as well. It might not be over for him yet. But how quickly can he make space with the field? He saved a lot of ERS in the first two stints as well. But now he's got a lot of work to do down in P14. So he might have to use a bit more battery. Then he was anticipated, but here we are there with Russell as he slowly crawls and just decides where's to go. He can decide where to go whenever they want, as long as you don't break and accelerate, break and accelerate at the same time to cause a massive pile of like we saw in Magello in 2020, where the midfield did crash. And here we are, Russell coming towards the final corner. Now these tyres will be cold. Backy looking very keen on the back of Russell there. Surprised those guys didn't pit down there. Maybe it was a tactical decision to leave Gary out there to help Verstappen, but Backy P2. I don't know why he didn't make a pit stop because the safety car came out and he was before the final quarter. But look at that. Look at the restart Russell has got. A 7 tenth gap already over Backy. Here comes QVR Gary. We even left to right but not able to make a move. Sweet crowd has from the inside into turn one. He's ahead of Chris now. He gets a penalty oh. and so does Chris. A very easy place to pick a penalty. It's such an easy place to catch drivers out. But interestingly, Verstappen did overtake Gary in turn three. Yeah, Gary, you can see how little grip he has in comparison to Verstappen. That was such a brilliant restart, though, from Russell. But Baki has responded well from then, and he continues on his way. Predictably, everyone is glued to the back of Gary's rear wing. And Mustache gets a phenomenal run, heading out of turn seven in. But Verstappen is on the battery, and he's going to blast past his teammate, surely then. But I don't think Gary's going to hold on for long, because Mustache is trying to follow him through then, slicing through on the inside towards turn nine. There's almost nothing to separate these three cars. Mustache gets alongside, but Gary holds it round the outside of nine. Mustache looks for the exit then. Tries to draw level. He's just got a front wing there. And he gets squeezed onto the grass by the McLaren then as he runs side by side into turn 11 then. He breaks a little bit later, Mustache. Trying to hold it down the inside. Gary is giving everything for his teammate. But the resistance eventually is futile and Mustache gets through. Next, Shadow Glow. Sweet crowd dives to the outside. Heading in to turn number 13. They go wheel to wheel and Sweet crowd may be able to complete that. Wow, what a move. And Shadow Glow goes back. Backwards, and he's the closest competition to Verstappen that doesn't have a penalty at the moment. So not a good restart for him. And Sweet Crown looking for another potentially. Look at how close they are as they run down the main straight. I think oh. Campbell managed to pick one up on Hazara as Sweet Crown gets past Gary finally on the straight. And Gary this time cannot hold it back. Shadow Glows it goes inside. Turn three gets the move done. Behind Hazara, Campbell side by side to turn three and four. Then Campbell's going to get pinched on the inside. Has to get out of it. Breathless action then. What? <laughs> action then with uh, Gary trying to hold up Mustache and the rest Verstappen they up behind Baki the race leader still Russell but Mustache has managed to follow him through but how much is that penalty going to cost him in relation to Verstappen who still runs cleanly up behind Baki can he put cars between himself and the man closest to him he waits for the moment then but he is the man on the charge as Gary and Chris <laughs> Jamie I cannot keep up with all the action on this restart save by save through 9 and 10 and Chris is squeezed off the track and he has to Martin rejoins but loses out to Hazara Hazara looking at Gary and oh my goodness Chris's car sent high and the Aston Martin is out of the race another third safety car please take over for me Jamie because my oh my that was breathless mate I was scrolling up and down throughout the page I could do that because I'm not live streaming I'm pretty sure the, the viewers don't like it when you always sc scroll up and down but I could do it because I'm not streaming but uh, wow I was looking at that action there Russell's pitted so he has gone for the pit stop Gary is pitted too as you expect on those older hard compound tyres do you know what I think both McLaren's did I think they boxed in um, mustache, so we did overtake both of them because he had a lot of slit stream on those two. But uh, Gary and Verstappen placed their cars very nicely to box in mustache to not overtake and keep him behind at bay as well. Then uh, obviously Gary held those guys behind. But now we'll see if the pendulum, who let's see who swings swings towards. I think Verstappen has still got the high ground. It looks like that he's the only driver in this top field here that hasn't got a penalty along with Shadow Glow in P4 there. But uh, Sweet Clown, what a great drive from him as well. From I think it was. 
P14 or 13 on the grid, up into P3. And now let's see who's got the uh, advantage. Verstappen still in P1. Russell able to go on a brand new set of the medium compound tyres to take towards the end. So not painful as Russell ex anticipated it to be because the safety cars helped him not lose too much time in comparison to others. But what great battles going on throughout the whole field there. I still really enjoyed it. Like you said, breathtaking action. I saw a bit of scary moments there. Not quite sure what happened to Chris because I had to flick on ball for Stafford overtaking somebody. I think he was back at the time. So uh, well, did Chris crash by himself or did somebody make contact with him? I only caught the aftermath myself. Uh, I did see his car being sent into the air as it hit the barrier then, so it was a very violent crash uh, and one that sent him out of the race. And it does mean now, though, top 15 point score points in LOE this season. We now have 15 drivers left in the race. So you see the checkered flag, you get points. It is just that simple. Verstappen at the front, and, well, you, well does it does still look very favourable for him. It must be said that the... Extended safety car periods are benefiting the drivers immediately behind him who have who were able to use the medium compound of tires because for Stappen on those hards, you'd in theory they are going to come into their own at the end of the race. And we saw, in fact, in the first stint how quickly those hards actually do come into play. But because we are now running under this safety car as look pits uh, from ninth place, maybe he'll look to put on a set of mediums or even softs to go all along with him. Slash also dives into the pet lane, even though he's already got fresh softs on. <laughs> we'll see what the strategy call is there, but back on that front group, for Verstappen, laps do get ticked off the board, but these mediums now, they're not going to wear as much near the end of the race, and they should have more pace in hand. So Verstappen, it looks good for him because he doesn't have a penalty, but he's still certainly under pressure here. Yeah, he is. Anything could happen to D. We saw how pushed up these guys can get, especially that middle sector with the slipstream and DRS being so powerful. We see some people overtake two drivers at one time as well. We saw Sweet Cloud do it, we saw Russell do it too. And uh, we'll see any or more of that action too. Slash has pitted six times in this race, so that's definitely the two stop rule ticked off there. <laughs> but in the comments section, Jav says, Is rain coming? I'm not quite sure, but the clouds are gathering in. So we'll see if the rain does impact the circuit or not. I like a bring extra spice towards this race too but yeah the Stafford should have the advantage in terms of no penalties we've got Shadow Glow in P4 he could still he, he shows some good pace overall has Shadow Glow he's always been stuck in that uh, DRS train but he could find himself on the podium later on as the safety car once again comes in so Verstappen now in control of the pace with Mustache watching and waiting in the well we saw Baki get caught completely off guard uh, by Russell's approach on that last restart. Verstappen, of course, has already led a safety car restart in this race. We'll see how he plays it this time. He does run a much faster pace than Russell does, which is to his advantage here because he needs to keep as much temperature as he can in those hard tyres. He is the only driver in the field on hard tyres. In theory, he's got the slowest tyres in the race, but he is at the front. He does have that track position to go with it. Can he hold on to it? He accelerates now and he gets a bit of a jump. Mustache has to respond, but there wasn't much time for Verstappen to really open up that gap before the next corner. So Mustache has clawed himself back to within three tenths and we are racing yet again. There's a couple of breaks in the train. Some drivers unable to quite respond as well as they would have hoped, but we are back to green flag action then and Verstappen leads Mustache and Sweet Crown to the first couple of corners then. We will see if there's going to be any early in initiatives, any any early offensives as the top three run lane astern. Cucumber is already on the move. He goes inside off turn three against Jim. Gets the Alpha Tari back into his rear wing mirrors then. Russell is also on the attack. He sweeps through out of turn four and a turn five. Wow, that was quickly done. And he now runs in 10th place then. Has the Alfa Romeo up in front of him then. A close competitor to him in the championships. He was looking for that as Mustache glides past Verstappen down the straight. And Sweet Crown looks to follow. Sweet Crown maybe looking for one more. He looks to the inside of Mustache as they barrel towards turn nine. Eventually, he does wait and watch, but Mustache runs wide, heading out of turn ten, and Sweet Crown is back on the offensive. He looks to the outside then. Can he draw himself alongside? I think he's going to think better of this one, though. He breaks a lot later and tries to go all the way around the outside. I thought he was backing off, but he's not. He's going all in for this race lead. Is he going to get it? Yes, he is. Mustache had to yield in the end, or 
he would have suffered the same fate as Cucumber did earlier on. But Sweet Crown, another move to get to the front. And now we mentioned the gap between Verstappen and Shadow Glow. Now Ver Shadow Glow, the only other driver in the front group to not have a penalty. He has Verstappen right in his sights. And now those two, you'd see, third and fourth on the road, but fighting for the race lead. Game on then. Shadow Glow has the net race leader firmly in his sights. Yes, he does indeed on those meeting compound tyres. DRS will be enabled on the next lap. But what can Russell and Cucumber do as well? The former top two, well, the former top three drivers in ninth and tenth there. They've got some blistering pace. You can see Cucumbers will use a lot of DRS as well. He saved a lot of it in the first and second stint, but now have to use it to overtake these drivers. Next driver is CPI, uh, ILT Fleddy, I think it is, in yep. P9, sorry. I got confused there because he was a CPI. Here comes Mustache. He taps the back of Sweet Crown, so I'm not quite sure if he's trying to go for a move, but he had to back out of it. He is staying behind him, so he doesn't want to go for it. Here comes Cucumber. Here comes Russell, who also taps the back of Cucumber there. Give him extra speed on the straight. I don't think Cucumber will mind that too much, but uh, he gets a penalty. Oh, he's that. off the track. Here comes Russell. Use the, use the ears to his advantage, and also the mistake. Here comes Mustache on Sweet Crown, too. Russell is up into P8 ahead. Of Cucumber, Danny inside goes back here, those soft compound tyres ahead of Fleddy, so Fleddy's lost three positions there in one go, unfortunately, for IRT there, and his arm is all over the back of Cucumber too. I don't think Shadow Glow wants to let the hass through because he knows he's got a penalty right behind him, he needs to keep, keep Verstappen in his sights there to try and stay contention for a podium or race win, he's fighting with Verstappen on a level playing field in terms of no penalties, but here he is, look at Campbell up the inside into turn one, lost pace on those hard compound tyres in the second stint, but looks like he's found some, he's up into P5 ahead of Hazara. Hazara looking to fade it back though, heading up towards turn three, he dives to the inside, goes late! Oh my goodness, he gets up and alongside the Alpine! That was unexpected, he threw a dummy then, didn't quite work out as Campbell holds on using that outside line, heading through three. <laughs> wow, I did not see that one coming, I don't think Campbell did either, but he managed to respond and hang on to that fifth place, still chasing after the front four, but... He does now have six seconds of penalties to his name. Russell makes another move. He can he make another. Look at the straight line speed of the Alpine. He's going to get past Hazara now too. He moves up into sixth place now behind his teammate then. Nuth and Hazara done on one straight. I don't know what wings he is running, but they are phenomenally low. He's used a lot of battery to do so, but he's right back in the hunt here as Russell. A phenomenal recovery. Verstappen, Shadow Glow, Russell, Hazara and Nuth are side by side. Through turn 11, they make a bit of contact through the exit then. Nuth trying to hold it all the way around the outside. Hazara throws in a lot of entry speed to 12. They run side by side. Baki looks to make it three wide. Has to get pinched over on the inside. Nuth is in front of Hazara. Baki is slow through 13. And Cucumber nips through. And the Alfa Romeo just about getting up into ninth place. They run side by side as the Alpines swap down the main straight. So they now run fourth and fifth. Or fifth and sixth, sorry. As they head into turn one then. Baki ahead of Cucumber still. Gary in behind them. Baki is trying to attack now. Hazara outside towards turn three. Where the final six laps and the action has not stopped because Baki is going all the way around the outside. Bit of wheel banging with the Haas, but he is going to get through. Baki now runs eighth and he is looking at a very strong result then because he's the fourth highest driver with no penalties. Back to the lead group. Mustache, Sweet Crown, Verstappen, Shadow Glow, Russell. That is the top five. Russell did phenomenally well to get into the mix, but now... He's going to head a bit of a brick wall because Verstappen, Shadow Glow, Russell, those are your main contenders for the win as it stands. As Mustache gets a sweet crown, makes the move on Mustache for the lead. And Verstappen is going round the outside. Bit of contact, wheel to wheel. Has the corner across the inside of turn nine. Now here comes Shadow Glow. Shadow Glow is on the outside. Russell's going to make it three wide. Heading into turn 11. Who's the last of the late breakers? Russell down the inside. Makes contact with Verstappen. They go spearing across the track. Shadow Glow trying to get involved. Campbell as well sweeps around the outside. And Russell. Russell somehow is through. He now runs third. He's got to try and get back in the range of the two cars in front. That was so phenomenal. That might be a move of the season. Russell takes Verstappen. What a phenomenal drive through the field by the championship leader. Oh my goodness me. That was excitement all around. Three abreast into turn 11. We've still got more action. This track is produced, produces a really good race in terms of league racing, but unfortunately not for real life F1, although we've seen a lot of moves coming into that middle sector there. But QVR Gary had to reset the track because he was beat on the curb. He couldn't get it going anywhere. So uh, I think he'll get away with not having a penalty there. But uh, Russell, I was about to mention, he could be in contention for a race win, and he can. He's a net race leader in terms of no penalties. He's behind Mustache and Sweetcorn with the freshest tyres out the lot. 
So he's gonna, he's of course to win this Grand Prix if he keeps it nice and clean. A uh, penalty fee as well because also not to mention the Stafford and the Shadow Glow have got no penalties whatsoever. They're about to go two by two uh, side by side. Is Campbell and Shadow? But uh, let's see if he backsides this corner. Yes, he does. Has to back up for the time being. I think the Stafford's problem was going side by side into turn down and turn ten. He wasn't fully alongside enough to do it and therefore compromised him into turn ten. And here comes Shadow around the outside trying to go for another move. He can't quite do it when he do it on the switch back. No, he won't. So I think Campbell, great defensive there, stays in P5. But Russell is in the best place as a lot. No penalties and also the best tyres in this field too. So he's on course to win this Grand Prix considering he was under pressure in, when the second safety car came out because he couldn't pit. But now, ever since that third safety car came out, it's brought it back into play on the fresher tyres, disposed the field very quickly, used a lot of ERS as well, and the straight line speed, speed was me mega too. So I am have to DM him to follow his Australian setup for tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, you do have a league race coming up, don't you? So you're going to take full advantage of that. Backy and Flady are safe by side in a turn three. And Backy makes another move. He now runs eighth, but he does have to try and get in contact with the group in front. But that group in front is threatening to break up. Verstappen just can't quite live at the moment with the cars in front. Because Russell... Oh, oh. my goodness! Russell penalty! Russell penalty! That is huge news. And his charge is going to have to continue then. He lines up Mustache and is going to go through. He was in possession to win this race. That task just become a lot, lot harder. But he's staring down the race and he's not over yet because the closing speed on Sweet Crown was so immense. Heading it to, oh. oh, big snap heading out of 10. I imagine the frustration's got to be mounting, but he's going to go for the race lead here. Side by side with Sweet Crown. He does get it done again into turn 11. He gets in front. The gap to Verstappen, that is one thing we're going to have to look out for. The gap to Verstappen is uh, just I'm trying to figure out, it's just over a second still. So Verstappen is right in contention, and all he has to do is stay in touch. And again, we say this multiple times already, the pendulum swings once again. Russell is dispatched of the top two then. It's been a phenomenal overtaking display, but now he has to make sure that mistake was not in vain. And the pressure now on Verstappen, can he keep it clean all the way to the end? There is nothing that is guaranteed. This race is not over. Penalty galore around this circuit, and also Verstappen and Shadow Glow could find themselves on the podium, but Nuss might interrupt that interfit. Oh, he goes off the track. Did he cross off the, off the racing track? I'm not quite sure. But there's a bit of a gap now between P7 downwards with Baki there in P8 defending from C, uh, ILT Fleddy in P9 there. Fleddy's under massive pressure as well from the uh, LP driver, so that's the wrong for all. That's North versus Campbell. Yeah, so the gap is 1.1 towards Russell, and it's so hard to break out the DRS zone around here, because there's four of them. So, Russell is fresh tyres. Can he break that DRS gap? And here comes Verstappen. He knows there's a big chance of winning this Grand Prix. Now, you can see that first, second, and third have penalties. How much of a risk is he going to take against these guys? He took a big risk in turn 9 and turn 10, because he almost made contact. He almost picked up a penalty, too, by going off the trap. I'm not quite sure how many warnings Verstappen's got. But he needs to make sure he doesn't pick up penalty now because if he does, that's his race win gone. And also, Shadow Glow might be outside of chance for podium because he spent so much time defending from Nothing Campbell. He broke the DRS too from the guys ahead, defending that much against North. He got pushed off the track in turn four, or turn three, sorry. So, is his podium chance to start to fade away? We'll see. But as long as he doesn't get a penalty, it's all right. Shadow Glow is weaving a bit on the straight, so I'm not quite sure what's happened. He's let North go, so he's admitted to his mistake there. Yeah, the Ferrari does go through, and Nuth is going to try and drag him along, of course. Uh, Shadowglow is playing for that lack of penalty, trying to bring him back into play. Russell leaves, but we're inside the final two laps, and you get the feeling now at this point, he's the race is out of his hands at this point. He is hoping for, result, for mistakes from others, maybe Sweet Crown and Mustache. Go side by side then, start battling and costing time. Cucumber picks up a penalty. Anyone can pick up a penalty at this stage. So the pressure is on Verstappen. He's low on battery. And is that just a spot of rain Man. coming into it right at the end of this race? Another twist in the tail here at Albert Park. Russell is doing all he can, but the track conditions may diminish over those last two laps. So many elements in the way. Can Verstappen see this one through? He's still in the mix, but he's got many, many more factors into play now. Well, I thought my eyes were deceiving me because I saw spots, spots on the screen, but it was actually rain. So I was so confused there. But uh, yeah, rain has impacted. But I don't think it'll be enough to, uh, yeah, obviously the Inters won't come out because the last lap, obviously no one's going to pit. But I don't think it's going to be enough to uh, impact the dry tyres. So the slick should be good on the last lap. People could be very careful not to uh, pick up penalties or lose traction or anything like that. So for Stappen... His last lap, very important last lap for Stappen. He's got to make sure he does not pick up a three-second time penalty, otherwise the chances of victory are gone. 
So he's got to keep it nice and clean. There's no need to take risks. There's no need to try and fight the guys ahead. Not going to break anywhere because of the DRS. So we're going to keep it nice and clean now, making sure it does not go out wide, exceed, exceed the chat limits anywhere. So the consistent one, the clean head, keeps it out of a uh, penalty ring. Oh, I think we just lost Jamie there, but nevertheless, uh, Sweet Crown is still in the hunt for a podium here because he runs right up behind Russell. He's kept him in check despite the four-lap older tyres, and now he could go on the offensive here. The gap to Verstappen to the race lead is 1.5 seconds, barring any disaster. He has this one, but Sweet Crown is making sure he's going to join him on the podium. He sweeps round the outside of turn eight, and he has the lead of the race then on the final lap. Can he see that one through? It's been a phenomenal drive through the field, starting all the way back in 13th place. Russell is throwing everything at it, but he's out of battery and cannot get anything back. So, with the gap at 1.7 seconds, Verstappen is falling away, but he has plenty of margin to work with then. Sweet crown from Russell. Russell cannot pick his way through. Mustache as well waits helplessly in behind. So, Sweet crown rounding the final corner. He will cross the lane to win this race provisionally, but watch the timing screens now. They're going to light up. Sweet crown crosses the lane in front, but QVR Verstappen has the race when in Australia Shadow Glow did manage to come through in that second place it just 9 10 down the leader and Sweet Crown grabbing that podium at the last from Russell who ends up a frustrated fourth Mustache Baki Nuth Luke Fleddy and Slash rounds out the top 10 then Campbell Jim Hazara Gary and Cucumber not sure what's happened to him on the final stand but he will be the last driver to come over the line I think that may well have been the best race of the season. Just breathless action. And QVR Verstappen reigniting championship hopes. He comes out on top today and grabs some very critical points. That was an incredible race. Wow. What a first race to be introduced to. And also, apologies about that. I, I accidentally unplugged my mic whilst I was moving around. Trying to move my <laughs> controller around. So it unplugged itself. And uh, yeah, what a race. Also, what to mention, Sweet Crown has well started P17 and up to P3. It's always, it's always a driver involved, no matter where he is on the circuit as well. So shout, shout out to him as well for making incredible moves, especially in that middle set to there, make his way through the field too. Russell, great moves as well, considering he was under big pressure from falling down into P12 and the last safety car then up to P4. Lost out the podium with Sears after Sweet Crown overtook him. So I thought his tyres would be better than Sweet Crown, but actually Sweet Crown managed to hold on and finish at P3. Actually P13, it says. So I was, I was completely wrong about that one. But so uh, yeah, this race was all about not picking up any penalties because Baki was outside the top 10 when he crossed the line and finished in P6. So what a great race for him as well. Slash, he was mostly down in last place, it must be said. And he finishes in P10 due to no penalties. So that's how much of uh, an impact it can make on your race if you don't pick up penalties and stay consistent all around. And that's what happened to Verstappen there in P1. Showed great pace overall and he picked up no penalties whatsoever. So congratulations to him on a fantastic win. Very sensational indeed. And I'm uh, very pleased to say that I enjoyed this race. Incredible action from start to finish. And the Australian Grand Prix always, always puts up some great show. Considering that ever since they moved up the chicane, so that's to be the best thing to do. <laughs> it does make for very chaotic racing, uh, both in the real world at times, although not always, and of course, uh, in the game. Yeah, that was pretty incredible then. I do think that was probably my favourite race of the season, so uh, it's good that you can be alongside me for that one. And in fact, I do believe that Jake is also not going to be here next next week, so you may be alongside me uh, once again uh, in the next round of the championship uh, so with Verstappen winning, Shadowglow with him, those guys are going to take some points out of Russell's championship lead. And uh, well, with Russell, just that late error, uh, making that mistake, getting that penalty, setting him back. And well, after winning four out of the last five Grand Prix, maybe it's a little bit refreshing to have a ra another race winner. But it was ob obviously the man that won right before him at Silverstone. And also a wet race. He does seem to like those, but he takes out the win then. And it was the top three in the championship currently still putting on quite a show. That was uh, yeah, pretty action-packed as everyone now dips out of the lobby. So Verstappen takes the win. Russell will still hold on to the championship lead, but a slightly diminished one. We'll see how he holds on to it. And uh, just come, coming to you, Jamie, you got any final thoughts for tonight? I just want to say thank you very much for having me. It's been a very fantastic race indeed. I enjoyed it from start to finish and uh, pleasure to commentate with you as well. And uh, enjoy the Australian Grand Prix. Enjoy the Portuguese Grand Prix too for MotoGP. 
I'm a, I'm a big MotoGP fan, so uh, I know a lot of people around here too. So um, enjoy those two categories, and hopefully we can have another good race next week, Ken. Yes, indeed. And that one, it's uh, actually, I need to check because it is an American Grand Prix, but I, I need to see actually uh, which, uh, which track it is. Hope it is. Kota. <laughs> is um, it is actually Vegas. So that is... Oh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, a bit of a major disappointment for Jamie there, but um, that is where you're going to be catching the action from uh, next weekend. Again, as per usual, it will be uh, half past six UK time, uh, and that will be next Saturday, the 30th of March. Be sure not to miss it. So I think that is going to be it. We have eight rounds now into this championship. Just six more to go. We are, as we said at the start of the stream, in it to the second half of this season now. We will see what that has to give. But I think that is going to wrap up everything for tonight. So for myself and Jamie, with just about everything said and done for this round of the championship, it is goodbye for now. And until next time, we'll see you later. <laughs>